What's up guys, I'm Debixie, and uh, today I'm doing a deck tech on a Sika God of the uh, Tree, and uh, in all honesty, this deck really doesn't use the uh, first side of that card, it really only uses the Prismatic Bridge, which is the other side of the Modal Double Face card. And uh, this deck is sort of going to be an upkeep tribal Enchant Enchantress-like deck. Anyway, let's get into it. So I'm going to take you through this deck and what the themes are through it and how we're going to try to win with it. First things first, and that's ramp. First, uh, we have our turn one ramp spells. So we have uh, Soul Ring, we have Search for Tomorrow, Exploration, Carpet of Flowers, which are just some massive commander staples that really do work if we can get, get them out soon. Then we have our turn two ones, which are Far Seek, Rampant Growth, and Three Visits. Uh, three Visits is a great card in this deck with because uh, we have a lot of the Triomes and Shocklands. So if you can grab those early, it's really helpful for fixing our mana. Then we have a uh, Growth Spiral, Arcane Signet, and Felwarf Stone, which is just some great uh, low to the ground. Um, growth Spiral is not a mana rock, but the other two are, which are great for the deck. Then we have uh, Kodama's Reach, Cultivate, and Sky Shroud Claim. And Sky Shroud Claim is in the deck just for the same reason three visits are, because it allows us to fetch our Triomes, which is, or Triomes and our Shock Lands, our Dual Lands, which is just really great. And then finally, we have a Migration Path, Circuitous Root, Explosive Vegetation, and Tenth with Discovery. Tenth with Discovery is an insane ramp card in this deck, because it allows us to get our World Tree and other super impactful lands out, out of our deck. And then uh, next, we have more ramp. <laughs> In this section that I've decided to call Ramp Ramp. Uh, in this section we have more or ramp cards, but these ones either play into the theme of the deck more or have more of a utility for the deck. It's more that they have different utilities rather than just fetching lands or producing mana. So for example, we have the Replicating Ring. And this one with us towing an upkeep tribal and being able to produce more upkeeps, Replicating Ring gets insane if we can get it out early. Like, you can possibly get it to trigger once or two times, or up to two times, like, maybe even three in a game. So, it's crazy. Then we have Thought Vessel, which is really great just because uh, we sort of tend to draw a lot of cards. So, Thought Vessel helps us not have to discard a lot of that. Um, then we have the Chromatic Lantern, which is just a great card in a lot of five-color decks. Um, then we have Kalani Heart Expedition. This card is ridiculous if you can get it out early and then have like a, a migration path or secutors route or explosive vegetation afterwards because then like on turn three you have like seven or eight lands out, out on the board sometimes which can be just ridiculous then uh next we have faber o elder and gigantha of the wellspring and chromatic orrery uh faber o elder gigantha wellspring chromatic orrery are all just insane cards that produce a uh, wooberg for our deck and we have a lot of cards in here that have activation costs of Wooborg, Wooborg or there's our commander who uh, costs Wooburg to get out. So these just also are pretty great for the ramp. Now uh, we're going to get into the next part of this, which is the Tutors, which I've decided to call Searching. So let's get into that. Uh, I know a lot of people are against putting Tutors in the decks, and depending on the deck, I try not to put them in too much either. But I felt with this deck being a five color deck and doing something that the deck doesn't necessarily really want to do, it really just helps making it more consistent overall. So first we have Enlightened Tutor, Idyllic Tutor, and uh, Sterling Grove. Uh, Sterling Grove is a great card for both tutoring, but also um, while it's on the board, it really it's a great protection for all of our enchantments. And also I know Enlightened Tutor, it's really expensive, but trust me, it's worth it. And then we have uh, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, Xur the Enchanter, and Captain Sisse. Um, these are all great tutor cards because um, with our commander being able to cheat out cards by revealing them off the top of our library, if we hit one of these early, it allows us to just really get all the key pieces out hold onto the battlefield quick with our deck. Then finally we have Liliana Vess and Scroll Rack. And I understand Scroll Rack isn't a uh, fetch per se or a tutor, but I included it with Liliana Vest just because they both have some of a sort of a top deck manipulation to them. With Liliana Vest being able to tutor anything out of your library and put it on the top of your library. And then with your commander, you instantly able to cast that for free. And then with Scroll Rack being able to take anything that you have in your hand that you know you're just not going to be able to cast like an Ulian or something ridiculously large. It allows you to then put it on the top of your library and cast it out with your commander for free. And then... Uh, Next, let's get into like the main main meat of this deck, and let's uh, let's get into that. I'm gonna call this one triggers. So first, we have the magic mirror. 
um, and In Search of Greatness. And honestly, the Magic Mirror, I think, is a really underplayed card in Commander. And I think in the right decks and in certain draw, uh, card draw decks, there it gets really crazy. And in, certain gra in Search of Greatness is just another way for us to cheat out large creatures or cheat out creatures in general early on, or not even creatures, but permanents. So that's really great. And then um, we have the entire Court Cycle from Commander Legends, and that is Court of Ire, Court of Grace, Court of Bounty, Court of Cunning, and Court of Ambition. And I know normally these cards aren't that great, but with the us being able to produce, produce multiple upkeeps with this deck, it starts to um, generate insane amounts of value. Not to mention getting the Monarch into the game just makes things a bit more fun overall for the play, uh, for the uh, for your playgroup. Now uh, let's get into the next section, which I've named more triggers. Anyway, so uh, with this deck, there's a ridiculous amount of upkeep triggers that end up happening. So uh, I decided with it, I've always wanted to build a deck with all of the uh, shrines in it. So that's what I did with this one. So uh, let's get right into it. We have a Sanctum of Tranquil Light, Sanct Sanctum of Stone Fangs, Sanctum of Shattered Heights, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, and Sanctum of Calm Waters. And I know most people don't think they're that strong, but we're, with this deck, once it, we get them going, they just they do a ridiculous amount of, of work. Then we have a Honden of Cleansing Fire, Honden of Life's Web, Honden of Night's Reach, Honden of Infinite Rage, and Honden of Seeing Winds. Which, a lo man, I think really these are undervalued in five color decks. And I'm, maybe I just haven't explored all the different commander options, but I know overall, like in this deck specifically they do a lot of work and then uh last but not least we have sanctum of all which the earlier you can you can get this out the better it's just a ridiculous card next uh let's get into how we're going to produce more upkeeps with this deck i've already alluded to it a bit but we're going to have a lot of way or not a lot of ways but a decent amount of ways to produce more upkeeps for this section there's only three cards but it's uh, sphinx of the second sun mirror made and paradox haze and if we have all three of these on the battlefield, we get four upkeeps per turn, which is just nuts if we have all the right cards out. And Mirror Maid, it's in the deck, and it ha it's also able to like copy like a Sterling, uh, what was this? Um, Sterling Grove and stuff. But it's mainly in there to copy Paradox Haze, which is really it just does it's crazy once you have both of them out. And then uh, our next section, I'm gonna call that Bombs. So. Uh, I'm not really going to explain why, but you're going to see in a second. So uh, the first three cards are Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, Nicol Bolos, the Ravager, and Nicol Bolos, Dragon God. The car these cards are really just powerhouses on the board. Next we have uh, Nicol Bolos, God Pharaoh, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, and Valky, God of Lies, who honestly we're always going to be casting as Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys can understand why I called this section Bombs. And uh, whenever you hear um, with this deck... I've sort of noticed that without these, it just doesn't have the ability to keep up with the or keep up pressure with a lot of like the more powerful like sevens and eights of other decks, or because otherwise it just starts to fall behind really quickly. And then uh, next we're gonna get into the miscellaneous section. With this section, uh, it's sort of that I didn't have enough, or I had certain cards that were a bit of an outlier that just sort of covered small things that could be helpful here and there. But anyway, let's get into it. First we have uh, Kaya, the Inexorable, and uh, Hall of Heliod's Generosity. These are great recursion pieces for the deck, especially with Kaya's ultimate. Honestly, currently I think she's really undervalued though with Kaldheim just being released. If you can snatch a few copies of this up, I'd do so right away. Uh, next we have Path to Exile and Laboratory Maniac, and I sort of hinted at this before, but this deck can really draw a lot of cards, so I felt like Laboratory Maniac, Maniac was really needed just so that uh, you didn't end up decking yourself and losing that way. And then Path to Exile is just in the deck because it's a great targeted removal spell and does a lot of work there. And I think it's just really great in every deck that you can fit it in. And then with this final section, um, I'm just going over the non-basic lands in this deck. And uh, I know a lot of people don't like to put in like these high-end non-basic lands, and that's more... that's perfectly fine and if you don't want to do that feel free and i want you to definitely take the time and try to balance the deck out with just basic lands or whatever you want to put in yourself but anyway i'm going to go over the non-basic lands that i put in also i just want to prefix that i put these uh, pre preface that uh i put these in because i had these lands just laying around not necessarily that i went out and bought them 
It's just that I've already had them, so I figured they'd work in the deck, and they, they're doing a great job at helping fixing the mana. Enough rambling. So first we have a Stomping Ground, Overgrown Tomb, and Reliquary Tower. Uh, these are just great. The two Shocklands and the Reliquary Tower is great for having no maximum hand size. Then we have uh, Rejuvenating Springs, Vault of Champions, and Undergrowth Stadium, which are three good cards in there from the uh, Commander Legends that just recently came out. Then we have uh, all of the Triumphs from Ikoria. So that's uh, the Indatha Triome, Savvy Triome, Rogren Triome, Zagoth Triome, and the Ketria Triome. And these are really great in the deck with uh, thing since we're able to fetch them with things like three visits and sky trouts claims and because we're able to do that if we're able to do that early on it really really helps us fix us fix our mana so if you don't want to pick up any of the basic lands i recommend these or if non-basic lands i at least recommend these and then we have a uh, seaside citadel sandstep citadel opulent palace and juggle shrine these are just another set of a uh, three uh three color tap lands and then uh, let's get into the Wooburg lands. So we have a uh, Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, and Path of Ancestry for our tap, uh, coming to tapped Woobergs. Then we have a uh, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Mana Confluence, which I know Mana Confluence is a bit expensive, but I just had two laying around, so I was like, ah, might, was, might as well put one of them in, in here. And then um, honestly, this card, I know I said if you don't like putting like uh, expensive or non-basic lands into your decks... I, I do recommend this one. Like, this one needs to be in the deck, I think, still. Which is, this? that's that's the World Tree from Cowtime. And this one's just insane in five-color decks. With its ability to uh, make it so that it all lands, once you have six lands on the battlefield, per, um, tap for any color of mana, it's just ridiculous with, that, with your deck and the five colors and mana fixing and stuff. And then uh, for my basic lands, I have six basic islands, five basic forests, one basic mountain, one basic swamp, and one basic plains. And uh, if you're going to build your own mana base for this deck and not use the uh, um, non-basics that I'm using, uh, I recommend putting more forests than islands. The reason that I don't have more forests than islands is because all of my non-basics tap for islands, or most of them do, compared to the amount that tap for islands, or sorry, most of them, more of them tap for forests than the amount that tap for islands. So I needed to put in more basic islands than I did more basic forests. That does it for the deck tech. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks so much for checking out the video. This is my first time doing a deck tech for my channel. So let me know down below what you guys thought of, of it. And also if there's anything I could do that would make it better or that you guys think would make it better. Um, also for this deck, I have a full Excel sheet. I make full Excel sheets for all of my decks. Um... And if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, shoot me an email and I'll send that out to you guys. And, uh, well, that's all for now, guys. Peace.